Well, you mentioned Aoka Lee was out for the Wildcats, but she's back in the lineup tonight for the first time in a month. She'll get the start. She has been out for a month since January the 13th with a broken bone in her ankle. So that really provides a big challenge for any team that faces her, and tonight it's the Cyclones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had surgery uh, recently, like a month ago, like you said, and Coach coach said that she might be back he didn't know for sure they they had kind of practiced with her a week ago but there's a little bit of pain so he didn't know for sure if she would be but there was the possibility Adi crooks gets inside lee and lee bats it away and again she's six foot four inches tall she is second in the conference averaging 19 points a game she is fourth in the conference and rebounding at 8.2 per game an absolute force Emily Ryan tries to penetrate the paint off the side of the backboard. And the rebound is taken by Briley Glenn, mentioning coming off that big 23-point performance against Oklahoma State in the Wildcats' one-point home court win over the Cowgirls last week. Feed goes in on the post to Lee. She can't finish. And it's Cyclone basketball with... Coach Finley said it's going to be a difficult matchup, even with Audie Crooks. Arianna Jackson called for an offensive foul, and so Kansas State coming in with a 21-3 record, 10-2 in the Big 12 with the boss basketball inside the lead. The kick back outside for Briley Glenn. Her sister, Jalen Glenn, gets it right back to Briley. She'll put up a running right-hander and score it. Emily Ryan, you can see her sinking down. Cyclones looking for their first points almost two minutes into the ball game. Addie Brown is from the state of Kansas, one of two Cyclone starters from Kansas, and Brown knocks down the shot. Ooh, got a little Lee got fell a little down. Physical down low. Nothing called. Bradley Glenn on the drive. 639 victories. He goes against Bill Fenley, who comes in with over. 700 in fact 769 so these two coaches are the winningest coaches in terms of number of wins in the big 12 conference and Mitty has done a great job in his tenure at kansas state and it certainly shows with the team that he has today she and her twin sister jalen glenn have made an outstanding one two combo kansas state has made a change and heavenly greer who's not seen a lot of action comes into the lineup for kansas state as lee has checked out and it'll be interesting to see how many minutes she's able to play coming back after a month of being idle. On the post, nine years dues for Bill Fenley in his 38th season as the head basketball coach, his 29th at Iowa State. He is tied for eighth, active wins, Division I. What a career he has had at Iowa State. On top, it comes to Jalen Glenn. Sandell with it. Being guarded by Jackson. Sundell into the lane, spins and scores. And Serena Sundell, who averages 11.7 second best in the Wildcat lineup, connects, and it's K-State up by a pair. Yeah, Sundell's been a great kind of a force out there for K-State, especially with Lee gone. She's really stepped up and kind of taken over the team. In fact, Bill Fenley feels that she is underrated. Overall, this series, 102 meetings. Kansas State leads the all-time series, 54-47. to Bill Finley, this is hard to believe, he's coached against Kansas State 61 times. <laughs> That's quite a resume. Emily Ryan sinks the free throw. That timeout was to identify who the foul was on, and as we speculated, as they called, it was on Heavenly Greer. Kind of a slow start for both teams. Kelsey Jones has come in for Iowa State. Lee back in. Misfires off the post. She's 0 for 2 to start the ball game. And it's Kelsey Jones coming down with the rebound. Rebounds could be a factor in this ball game. Iowa State, one of the best rebounding teams in the Big 12. K Crooks turns on Lee. K State's been doing a mighty good job on the boards as well. How about that move by Audi Crooks? Yeah. So those reverse layups are perfect for anyone who's kind of taller than you to get a better position and not blocked every time. Now Lee will work against Crooks, and Crooks stands his position, her position. Lee has had such an amazing career at Kansas State. Of course, missed last season with an injury. And again, as we mentioned, missed six games this year with a broken bone in her ankle. The shot in the corner. Glenn kicks it for Gregory. In the lane, it's Lee leaving it short, and Crooks there for the rebound. 
K-State's such a well-rounded team, as you can see in these last few games, with Lee out. I mean, even Coach Finley says they're gonna ma they're gonna adjust the way they play. Here's Walker down the lane with a floater that won't go. Rebound is secured by Giselle Sanchez. She'll fire from the corner, and it's long. The rebound coming down into the hands of another freshman, Ariana Jackson, on this very young Iowa State squad. Duke comes around the screen, set by Brown. Brown looks inside to Crook. She turns on Lee and scores. Silky shot. <laughs> right over Lee. It's a 10 to nothing run. Nettie Nadabu about to come back into the ball game for come into the game for the first time for Iowa State. Lee trying to get position down low. She turns and scores for the first time. Good shot over Crooks. Ryan around the screen by Crooks. Leaves it off. Rebound by Addie Brown. Here's due for three. Great positioning. Cyclones three of their first four behind the arc. Inside the drive by Sandell, and she gets fouled. Do picking up the foul, and that will be her first. She can drive, she can shoot the mid-range, she can shoot the three. And but she'll also post up. She's kind of the full package. We mentioned averaging almost 12 points a game, but with Lee sidelined over the last five games, she's averaged 15 points a game and hit 53% of her field goal tries. And she is the only guard, I believe, averaging over 50% from the field on the K-State team. The feed intended for Nadabu, but batted away, and on the turnover, Kansas State tries to score. Sides choke off on the defense. Here's Sanchez for three, and she knocks down a three. She hasn't shot the three ball well at all, just 25% this season, but that was a big confidence boost for her, no doubt. Yeah, she had two, actually, 18-point games in a row, and it's kind of been an ebb and flow of it. Or as Jeff Mitty said, she's just not given us the consistency we'd hoped for. Here's Sides knocking down a three. Ryan paired with Walker. Kansas State, one of the best defensive teams in the country. They are allowing only 54.8 for ball game. Getting Great. inside Addie Brown to score. Great pump fake by Addie Brown. Getting her off her toe, off her feet in order to create that uh, little dip in. The little bunny, bunny shot. Sanchez looking for two in a row. It won't go. And the rebound taken down by Hannah Bellinger, the senior from Grafton, Wisconsin, the transfer from Truman State. Ryan lobs for Nadabu, and Nelly Nadabu will have to hurry, gets the shot off with a count that had it gone, but it was nowhere close. And this first half, first quarter, I should say, has come to an end. Iowa State was red hot behind the three point line early, but then the Cyclones knocked down a couple themselves to cut an 11-point lead. Here's the feed inside. Aoka Lee on the miss. Perhaps just trying to get things back into the flow. Just one of her first five shots after missing six ball games in a month of action. Nadabu hands it off to Jackson. Addie Brown looks inside. Nice reach for it by Nadabu, and she's got her second down. And the Cyclones, who've led by as many as 11, go up by nine. I done the drive by Gregory, won't go, but she draws a foul and she will go to the line. He said it was um, based on matchup and availability of time. And Gregory knocks down the free throw. Averages almost nine points a ball game. It's a team that averages 73 points a ball game, just 18 with 6.42 to go in the second quarter. We got Crooks back in. Now's the time to use that mismatch. She's against Maupin. Jones for three, in and out and back in. It kind of rattles around, it drops, and Kelsey Jones both average more than 70 points a game. We mentioned Iowa State at 74.7, and K-State right behind them at 72.9. The ball inside to Lee, and she's able to finish for her second bucket. You can see she's kind of limping a little bit still. Again, she suffered a broken bone in her ankle, and that's what sidelined her for six ball games. Nymir Dew with a shot from midway down the lane. Dew's got seven. With five freshmen playing majority of the points, or majority of the minutes. And those numbers that you saw are the highest percentage of any Power 5 team in the country. Addie Brown looks for three. The Cyclones just red hot behind the three-point line. They are now four out of, let make it five out of nine, shooting the three ball. 
Lee working inside against Crooks. The battle to watch all night. Lee makes the catch, turns, fires, and scores. Iowa State's lead of 13 a moment ago. Right now it's 11 was their biggest lead so far tonight. And the Cyclones have led for all but a minute 40 seconds of this game. Another takeaway. The Cyclones have had a flurry of turnovers here at this stage of the quarter. There's been a, a few forced shots trying to force it down low to Crooks. Not reading the defense. Walker being known as quick off the bounce proved it right there. Just under two minutes left to play in the first half. Ryan still looking for her first basket. Gets it right there. Ryan has a really great left-hand extension to get outside of the defender that's on her. Cyclones lead by 11 late in the second quarter. Glenn sets the pick. Sandell drives, and she gets fouled. Ryan, Crooks, and Bellinger will leave. Coming back into play, Nanabu. Jalen Bristow for the first time, the freshman from Holiday, Texas. Getting some fresh feet out there to change it up. Sandell triggers to Sanchez. Sanchez having a cold shooting night, as are most of the Cats. Here comes Ariana Jackson out of the backcourt, the freshman from Des Moines Roosevelt High School, where she was a three-time All-Stater. Comes around the screen set by Nadabu. Feeds Nadabu. Nadabu gets inside Sanchez to score. And it's six off the bench for Nelly Nadabu. That was a sneaky pass. <laughs> I love passes like that. A little spin on it. Great positioning by Nelly. Iowa State equals their biggest lead. Cyclones that time a lapse on defense allows Jalen Glenn to drive almost untouched to the baseline to score her first basket. Making it a bit too easy for her. Brown looking for a position. Jones takes it to the paint. And she gets fouled. I think we had a pretty good angle on that on that <laughs> foul. <laughs> Not sure about that side of the court. Jones off the bench for seven. She's hit a couple of threes. Look at Jeff Mitty looking in. He had a long and successful career at TCU before coming to Kansas State a decade ago. So now Kansas State with five seconds on the shot clock. Has Sundell taken all the way to the baseline. She can't finish. The rebound is grabbed by Abby Brown, and this first half has come to a close. Getting jobs in sports, just have a general interest in sports. Very important day. Yeah, very important. Very awesome. Very cool to see that there are so many women being highlighted. Um, we're in a day and age where women's sports is much more broadcasted, and I think it's amazing to see um, all these talented individuals getting a little bit more, a um, little bit more press, a little bit more highlights around them. Absolutely, and of course, both these programs really enjoying terrific home court advantages and getting big crowds. Sandell shoots the ball down low for Lee, who kicks it back to Glenn. She'll fire from three. It's in and out and back in. And Briley Glenn, who got into early, or I shouldn't say early foul trouble, but she uh, didn't play a lot in the first half, and she knocks down the three. Audie Crooks with great positioning, draws a foul. Audie Crooks goes to the free throw line and does not get the roll. Comes in averaging 17.7 per ball game. And she has done a terrific job for the Cyclones this year, but really having a tough matchup tonight against the six foot four inch Aoka Lee. I love to see the competition between them. I think Audie needs someone her, her height in order to push around, and she's a freshman versus Lee. And I think it just teaches her a different level of the game. Cats go into Lee once again. She scores and draws it. We have Lee four for 11. She is a 72% free throw shooter. That's been an issue for her this season. Shoots a lot of threes, but has only made 35 of them. Just a 27% three-point shooter. Here's Crooks getting inside. Lee falls down. And the foul is going to go against Lee. So Aoka Lee picks up her second foul. Audie bleeding a little bit, not from this play. Good, good dip down. Audie looking to go right. Lee getting a little loosey-goosey with her feet. So the Cyclone athletic trainer will stop the bleeding, and then we will resume action as Crooks will go to the line. Five double-doubles from a player that went to the smallest division of Iowa schools, Algona Garrigan, and 
people thought, could she make the game and the transition in her first year? And the answer has been pretty obvious. Oh, yeah. I come from one of those small podunk towns, too. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say podunk, man. You did, Chelsea. <laughs> Never questioned her ability <laughs> to step into this space. People did, but not you. And she hits both free throws. She's got six points. I think that's because I, coming from a small town, I think you always have those people who are going to doubt your ability because you didn't play at a certain level or didn't play versus different type of competition. And the same thing happened with me. So knowing from experience, I know she's well capable. Gregory drives and scores. We mentioned it at the start of our telecast. Gabby Gregory got 27 points against the Cyclones last February 1st in Manhattan, the last time these two teams squared off. Tonight, though, different story. Her three-point shooting has not been there, so she went inside, able to get a couple right there in the end one. So K-State back to within six, closest they've been in a long time. But Bellinger changes that for the Cyclones by knocking down her second three of the ball game. Great hesitation, recognizing the defense flying out. And the three is there by Gregory. Well, we mentioned she struggled with a three-point shot this year, but if she gets hot... So Kansas State coming out of the locker room and playing well to begin this third quarter and outscoring the Cyclones. Here's Jackson trying to get inside, and Jackson draws a foul. Jackson, the freshman from Des Moines, averaging five points a game. Started 14 times this year, her 15th start of the season tonight. Again, she and Duke kind of alternating at that position. I am always impressed with Jackson's ability to match up, stay locked in on her person. Cyclones now 8 of 10 from the foul line, and Kansas State has hit all eight of their tries. Sundell in deep to score. Serena Sundell. Here's Ryan with just four points in the first half. Just one basket and a couple of free throws. Looks for Crooks, but the ball is intercepted. A little too late on that pass. Greer coming up with the interception. Glenn looks for three, and number three knocks down the three. K-State getting hot. And it's a 17-7 run for Kansas State to begin the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, you see uh, their three-point percentage in the first half. They were they were zero for or zero for six in the second quarter. Shot clock goes inside ten. On the post, Greer gives it back up for Sundell, whose three shot is short, and it's Jones with the rebound for Iowa State. Great defense by Iowa State. You can see the switch. Bellinger helping Kelsey, getting right back to their person. Jackson trying to make a move against. Jalen Glenn comes inside. Bellinger challenged by Glenn. The ball comes loose inside. And Nadabu draws a foul against Greer. I had the chance to talk to her this last weekend for Iowa State's Alumni Weekend. And she's, she's a very sweet human. And it's very cool to get to talk to her about her experience. And she misfires on both free throws. And it's Gisela Sanchez going high for the rebound for Kansas State. Score's been stuck here with this five-point margin for a while. Gregory trying to change that to the rack to score. Big basket for Kansas State's Gabby Gregory. Gregory coming alive with eight third-quarter points. She's got a really explosive first step. Knows how to get to the hoop. Ball goes inside, and that time Nadabu couldn't get to it. She tried to move around. Sanchez couldn't get to it. She should be able to get position on the offensive end. Again, Lee on the bench with three fouls. Sanchez off the baseline. And a collision that time as Jackson had the position established. Sandell tried to go over the top of her. Oh, I And the crowd thinks that the foul should go against... Sundell, but it will go instead against Jackson. And she has come alive, as we mentioned a moment ago in the third quarter. I think what's really special about Gregory is that when Lee's out, she's also been known to post up. She has nine points in the quarter alone and 11 for the ball game. I'm sure she was a bit antsy with all those injuries to get healthy and to be able to prove her, prove her talent. Jalen Glenn, take away and score in Kansas State has tied Iowa State at 48. Turnovers beginning to hurt the Cyclones. Guilty of their 16th turnover. And the foul will be called against K-State. Iowa State with the game even at 48. Just the fourth time this game has been tied. Still a lot of game left. There certainly is. <laughs> 
Ryan, who is fifth in active career assists in Division I among active players. So that battle on the post is resulting in fouls against both teams. Speed for Lee. And again, Crooks has to be careful with those fouls. And this time the foul is going to be called on Walker. One more for Kelsey Jones. Her 10-point ball game gives Iowa State a four-point lead with 40 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Sandell giving it up for sides. Lee battling Crooks, makes the catch, goes inside, puts it up too hard. That foul on Crooks. Per second. And so Lee will go to the line. Nine points in her comeback after missing six ball games with the broken bone in the rank. Kansas State 10 of 11 from the foul line so far tonight. And that continues to be successful for them as they once again close within a pair of Crooks and Lee on the high post. As Ryan directs the offense, Walker guarding her. Boy, Ryan really knows what to do in these late game situations, doesn't she? Mm. She finds Crooks, and Crooks finds the basket. That was a really nice move, and you can, I really love how Crooks left that left arm kind of push off Lee in that shot, a little step back shot. Iowa State still rebound, out rebounding Kansas, Kansas State, also just doing a much, K-State doing a much better job of scoring in the paint than they did in that first few quarters. Iowa State doing a better job on the boards, out rebounding Kansas State by 11. Here's Gregory pulling up, finding Glenn. Now Sides pulls up for a shot and knocks it down. She hits the mid-range jumper. Lee with her size and her length. Audie Crooks being able to do a little fadeaway shot, being able to adjust to that height. Jones gives it up for Jackson. Ten seconds to shoot. Jackson takes it to the paint, and Lee reaches up and blocks it. Still draws the foul, it looks like. As the free throw by Jackson is good. This fires on that one. Sides, by the way, that last foul for Kansas State. Lob inside. Lee catches, turns, fires, and gets the roll. I will say, not a whole lot of left-handed shots in this game today. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Lee now with 13 points. Ryan works against Glenn. Gets around her. Nice defense help side by Sundell. Three, right home by Jones. Very impressive to be that locked into your shot with that great form while a defender is flying out at you. And there is another very poised freshman in the lineup for Iowa State. Got by by the skin of her teeth. Briley Glenn gets the shot on the drive. Glenn, who did not score but four points in the first half, now has five here just in the early moments of the second or the fourth quarter. Last Kansas State lead was at 6.42 in the first quarter and 6-4. Here's Ryan off the glass too hard. Having a tough shooting night is Emily Ryan. Got a little intimidated by Lee approaching. Should have just gone up like a normal shot. Gregory got the rebound. Here's Briley Glenn getting out to Sundell. Gregory looking inside for Lee. Lee comes out to set the screen. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Drive by Glenn, gets around Jones to score. Briley Glenn, back-to-back -back baskets. Gregory in her fifth and final year at Kansas State goes to the line. She's a 67% free throw shooter who is four out of four. Tonight she will not go to the line, not a shooting foul. The inbound speed comes to Sanchez. Chan Sanchez drills a three. Decella Sanchez with her second three of the ball game, and Kansas State has their first lead since 642 in the first quarter. K-State's been getting hot and finding a rhythm in the second half. Iowa State needs to figure out how to stop them, how to get them off rhythm, how to get them uncomfortable. Jackson looks for three. Ariana Jackson with her first basket of the ball game. It's a great drive into the paint, locating Jackson on the three-point because her defender came down to help defend. Sanchez, a ball fake, tries to get around Crooks, but Crooks is right there. So the long three try, nothing but court for Sierra Sunday. Sanchez working hard to front Crooks down low. 
Bellinger open for three, and the rebound claimed by Jalen Glenn. Lee takes the inbound speed. Kansas State with a chance to extend their one-point lead, and they do so as Sundell slices through the score. She's in double figures with 11 of the Wildcats, lead it by three. Sundell doing what she does best, stepping up when they need some points. Cyclones be getting big play off their bench tonight as the reverse layup is there by Eddie Brown. That's her first points in the second half. Open look for Glenn. Rebound, run down by Bellinger. Brown is in foul trouble with four fouls, so she does have to play it safe. Crooks on the low post, works against Lee, gets inside of her, and Lee reaches over and fouls her. And Lee now commits her fourth foul. Will stay in the lineup at least for the moment for Jeff Mitty as Crooks gets the free throw. Jill Fenley's going to take an opportunity to give Crooks a rest. Gregory looking to go to work. She does and scores it. Kansas State, one of the best defenses in the country, ninth in the country at giving up points. Fourth in field goal defense in the country. Lob goes inside to Dew, and she scores off the post. Nine near Dew. Her ninth point, her first basket in the second half. I appreciate seeing that left hand move. Mix it up a little bit. Sandell drives and scores, and K-State takes the lead back. Ryan attacks the basket. Misfires on the shot, and the rebound is taken down by Briley Glenn. K-State a one-point lead in the ball. You can tell by the intensity of K-State's defense that they're just locked in. They know they're down to the wire. They know they have to step up and compete. And Sundell taking full advantage. In arrears by three, the lob comes intended for Crooks. She's able to corral it, finds Ryan. Now Brown for three with eight on the shot clock, and she drains it. Annie Brown with a huge three to tie it at 70. And it will be Kansas State basketball, score tied at 70. So it's Lee and Crooks in the spotlight. The big players for both ball clubs. That's been the go-to players. It's going to come down to who wants it more. Who's going to lock in a defense in this last minute. Sandell lobs on the give and go. Unable to finish on the play is Briley Glenn. Who denied his 2 of 2 and on the season is 17 out of 21. So she has been a good free throw shooter for Kansas State. And she gives the Wildcats the lead. One more for Briley Glenn. Misfires there. Cyclones with the rebound. One Iowa point State point. down by a point. Just a three second, make it a two second differential. Shot clock and game clock. Brown fires. Unable to connect. And the rebound taken by Lee. And Kansas State gets a timeout. As of course, with that timeout, women's basketball, you get to play to the midcourt rather than from the backcourt. Defeat comes into Lee. Nymir Du tries to take it away from her and commits the foul. So Lee will go to the line with 17.8, just two seconds off the clock. Du checks out. Lee at the line. He's been perfect in three free throw tries so far. Not this time. So the best she can do is give the Wildcats a two-point lead with 17.8 to play. Got to make it. A lot of pressure. She does that. Lee, both Glenn, Sundell, and Walker on the court for Kansas State. Crooks, Ryan, Brown, Jackson on the floor for Iowa State. Ryan takes the inbound speed. Jones is the fifth Cyclone on the court. And there's a foul up top. It's called against Jalen Glenn and a non-shooting foul. But because the bonus is in effect, 10.6 to play as Brown goes to the line. She's a 76% free throw shooter. First trip to the stripe tonight. It was just as you predicted. Get it, get Emily Ryan, get it out, and then kick it, uh, kick it into Audie Crooks down there for the post. 
Brown brings her team to within one with 10.6 to play. Again, K-State has two timeouts remaining. The Cyclones have one. Brown ties it at 72. That's and it. K-State will use the timeout to play it in from midcourt with 10.6 to play. And you said they've already been doing it all season. They they played against Iowa. They played down in Florida versus in a tournament. They played in a, a neutral Missouri site. And so they're they're prepared for the energy that and playing it on a road game. Sandell takes it right to the rack and has it blocked out of bounds. It'll be K-State ball with 6.8. Good positioning, good defense by Emily Ryan. Lee hands it to Sandell. Three Brooks seconds. Two. Sandell bottled up. Desperation to touch will go, which means this game goes into overtime. At the end of regulation, the Cyclones and the Wildcats are tied at 72. Lee and Crooks jump for the start of the overtime period, and Iowa State will possess it first. Emily Ryan, who has had a tough shooting night, just one out of ten, but directing the offense, seven rebounds for her, as well as eight assists. She handles the basketball. She'll take it to the rack and misfire on the shot and lead. Glenn hands to Sundell. Sundell against Jackson, who's got those four fouls. Shot clock goes down to 10. Sundell finds Jalen Glenn. On the post, it's Lee. Leaves it short. Crooks there for the rebound. Good defense by Crooks. Hands straight up. Not looking to foul. Seventh rebound for Audie Crooks. Silky pass by Emily Ryan. Crooks over Lee. 14 points. Now for Audie Crooks. Iowa State with the first lead in overtime. Here's Briley Glenn driving and missing, but getting fouled by Kelsey Jones. Glenn went to the line late in regulation, one of two on the line. Coming off a 23-point performance against Oklahoma State, which was a season high for her. She notches both free throws. Couple players on the floor. Brown having a little bit of trouble handling on to the basketball. Just over three to play in overtime. K-State switching very well. Jones misses on the drive. Crooks battles for the rebound, but Lee takes it away from her. Literally picks it off of her hands. Glenn puts up a shot. It won't go. Gets her own rebound. Iowa State not boxing out. Big offensive rebound for the Wildcats. Here's Gregory with 12 on the shot clock. Sundell. Now Glenn inside to Lee and Lee with a big turnaround. Give her 16 points in her return to the lineup for K-State. And the Wildcats with a two-point lead. Nice right-handed hook by Lee. Earlier those weren't falling, but it seems to be the moment for her. Coming off that six-game, one-month layoff, she's really done a terrific job for the Wildcats, as has Crooks for the Cyclones. Good pump fake by Crooks. Jackson watching her, but playing with four fouls. Sundell eyes a three, lobs for Lee. Lee works against Crooks and hits the shot. Another big basket by Aoka Lee. Crooks comes high to set the screen. Ryan to the baseline. Ryan draws the foul. Sundell puts her hands to her head as she picks up her fourth foul. And she has that great extension of that right hand. The Kansas native. Ryan out of Chaplin, Kansas, and everybody remembers the home of Jackie Stiles. That free throw is up, and it's good to tie it once again. Sundell against Jackson, a good perimeter defender, but with four fouls. Glenn in the lane, spins out into the hands of Addie Brown. Unlucky shot. Ryan trying to penetrate the paint. Crooks makes the catch. Now Ryan goes baseline, nothing going there. Brown works against the defense of Sundell. Shot clock down to nine. Bellinger gets it to Crooks. Crooks misses the shot. Crooks knocked to the court. Rebound comes out to Brown. Fresh 20 for Iowa State with now just 23 seconds on the overtime clock. And a difference of nine seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. K-State switching on defense. Ryan turns and misses. Follow shot. Don't go. But a foul call. Jalen Glenn with her fifth foul. 
She leaves with a total of seven points in the ball game, and she is replaced by an outstanding player, an outstanding sub, in Zion Walker, who's the first one off the bench for Jeff Mitty and could start a lot of places. Addie Brown, free throw good. Brown with 15 and gives her team the lead. Now eight seconds on the clock. Brown drains them both. Lee Sundell, Gregory on the court. Also there is Walker. Six seconds. Sundell finds Gregory. Gregory lobs for Lee. Lee at the horn, hits the shot. And the basket will count. The Wildcats rank seventh in the country. K-State has lost a player due to fouls in Jalen Glenn. And the Cyclones have three players hanging on with four fouls apiece. The opening tap controlled by Kansas State. The Wildcats with a 21 and three record ranked seventh by the Associated Press. Walker, baseline feed intended for Lee. It is wide and on the turnover, it'll be Iowa State basketball, K-State Turns it over for the 12th time. The Cyclones with 19 turnovers. Kind of a risky move by Crooks, considering she has four fouls. Crooks bustles her way in and gets her 18th point. And Iowa State takes it. And at the other end, there's a foul called as K-State drives. It is Ariana Jackson, and that will be her fifth. Only five points, but the job she did was at the defensive end of the court. Mm -hmm. She's that scrappy Iowa State player. Sandell calmly sinks the free throw. The junior from Maryville, Missouri. Goes two of two at the line. To tie the game up once again. And this game has now been tied a dozen times. Emily looking for that back cut. K-State playing that lockdown defense. Again, they are so good defensively. Here's Crooks. Midway down the lane. Hits the turnaround. That's what I'm talking about. That fadeaway jumper. Hilton fans trying to create that energy. Gregory goes around the screen, feeds on the baseline. The shot goes down by Zaniah Walker, her second basket. Down the middle of the zone comes Crooks. It's blocked by Lee. She gets it back. It's blocked again by Lee. It's loose. There's a pileup. Who's got the possession arrow? Iowa State has it. And Crooks is not getting up, being helped to her seating position. A lot of appendages. And I think she's now saying, I think I'm okay. Let me play. She gets herself up. And what a warrior Audie Crooks has become, or always was. And it's certainly now, as she's turned the page from small-town basketball in Iowa to big-time basketball in the Big 12. And right now, it'll be Nymir Du who will check in for Crooks. Nellie Nadabu is the one who has replaced Crooks. Yeah, it'll be, I think it'll be the first time with Nellie matching up on Lee. And Nadabu. Not to say that Nelly didn't do a good job. Nelly did score on the other end in, in that small amount of time. Sandell pitches it back outside. Southland's really playing some very strong defense in the overtime. Sandell for three. Got it. Serena Sandell knocks down a big three to give Kansas State the lead at 87-86. Got to have your hands up, especially when it's down to the wire like this. Crooks sets the high post once again. Now she will roll down low against Lee. Makes the catch. Forces inside. Lee gets a hand on it. Walker comes up with it for Kansas State. She gets bottled up, but she gets the timeout. Wildcats with the ball. No time. They did not take a timeout there. As they ruled it was that off Iowa State, so it's K-State ball with a one-point lead. Walker. Guarded by Dew. High lob comes to Lee. Here's Gregory around the screen set by Lee. The ball rolls out of bounds. And it was a turnover against Kansas State. Iowa State gets the ball back. They're going to have to dig deep. Crooks has played 35 minutes. Lee has played 33 minutes. Iowa State down by one inbounding. Bellinger drives. And a foul is whistled. Bellinger, a 79% free throw shooter, has a couple of three points Baskets tonight for a total of six. And she ties it up at 87. That is tie number 14 tonight. Bellinger knocks down a pair. And Iowa State takes the lead at 88 to 87. 
Five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Sundell tries to move. Lee. Sundell hunting for the shot. Sundell off the front of the foul. island. Rebound comes to Addie Brown. And again, the Cyclones will call a timeout, and she will play it inbounds. Inbound speed comes to Brown, and she is fouled immediately by Sundell. And Serena Sundell will foul out with 19 seconds left in the second overtime. Serena Sundell, what a game by Sundell, though. 20 points, 7 assists. Great game. She's been able to try to control the tempo, looking for the hunting for those shots at the end of the clock. Brown calmly to the line, has hit all five of her free throws in this ball game, including four in over three in overtime. Like I said early earlier, um, you can always count on Iowa State to make the shots one that counts. And they have tonight. They lead by three. K State not going to call a timeout. They need a three to tie it. Here's Glenn going in deep, trying to draw a foul. She does that with 12.4 to play. Iowa State will inbound. Iowa State needs to take care of it for 12 seconds. And Ryan's going to be fouled immediately. And you're right. If you're Kansas State, there's not a good choice on the floor for Iowa State on who to foul. It becomes a two-point ball game. And K-State will have 11.2 left to play to try to tie it with the two, depending on what the free throw. They're going to need a three because it's a three-point ball game. With just over 11 seconds to play. If Iowa State is able to pull this off, they'll be able to hold their record of K-State not winning in their home since 2018. That feed goes over the head of... And they're going to put 10.6 on the clock. Zai Walker to inbound. Looks for Sanchez. Sanchez will take the two because the Cyclones give that to her. Now eight seconds to play. And a foul immediately lays the inbound speed. Comes to Ryan. Iowa State fans not happy with what just happened. The person that K-State did not want them to get the ball to. Because again, Ryan, one of the great free throw shooters in Cyclone history. And she very calmly steps to the line. Iowa State by three. Same situation as a moment ago. Only now just seven seconds for Kansas State. Inbounding will be Taryn Sides. A freshman, and it's a freshman who guard her on the inbounds in Kelsey Jones. Sanchez wide open. And Sanchez will take the two, 5.4 to play. Looking for the steal. Iowa State's going to have to work to get open. Bellinger to inbound. It comes into Brown, and Brown gets fouled. And Brown is 6 for 6 from the free throw line. Again, the freshman, Crooks and Brown, stepping up huge for Iowa State. And again, calmly sinks it, and she has just been perfect in the overtime period. Getting to the foul line, knocking him down. Brown looks for her 20th point. She has it. K-State, three seconds, two seconds. They'll take a desperation shot. It will be off the top of the backboard. And the Cyclones win in double overtime against the seventh-ranked Wildcats. What a game. What a tremendous effort on both teams and both all the athletes all around.